All right, guys, are you serious? Are you serious? No! I, I, I know I wanted to say that just because there's so many things happening tonight and around the world that you just want to scream, no! Okay, or what? But I'm going to just stay calm tonight. We're not going to do that. Uh, welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. It is Thursday Night Live, and Mike from the world will be joining us tonight. Um, but let's uh, let me put a shout out right now for www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Guys, seriously, take a look at your retirement plan. Take a look at your 401k. You might want to diversify, and you could do that real easily by going to pastorpaulgold.com. Let Noble Gold help you in your in your financial plan for the future. You can call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And tell them that Pastor Paul sent you. All right, so tonight, let's just start here. Tonight's a big night. We've got so huge, huge things to talk about. And I started thinking about it. It's like prophecy coming to pass from every different direction. We have a total solar eclipse coming in just a few days. We just had a partial blood moon. We have a comet that's racing toward us, but we can't see it because it's too close to the sun. But during the solar eclipse, when the sun is blocked by the moon, we'll be able to see the comet in the shadow of the moon. Jesus said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves will be roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. But what about the powers on earth? Okay, men's hearts would fail them for fear because they're going to be looking after these things coming up on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. But then we're going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. So when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head. Your redemption is drawing nigh. I'm going to tell you tonight, the Baltimore Bridge has got everybody on edge. That's the truth. The Baltimore Bridge has everyone on edge. When you think about it, Francis Scott Key, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, you wonder if there's such a symbolic, the symbolic uh, uh, consideration here. Has Old Glory, uh, is it going to fade away? Is the United States of America, this republic in which we stand, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are we still having the opportunity to have the pursuit for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Is, this, is it still America? And this bridge that fell, which is going to cripple the economy in not only Baltimore and in the East Coast, but all across the nation, that bridge is the key to all of the hazardous material, chemicals, petroleums, uh, a lot of uh, fertilizer, a lot of, a lot of the dangerous toxic chemicals that's used in many different industries are purposely carried across that bridge so that it gets out to the rest of the country. So, and it's so that there couldn't be a toxic or some kind of hazmat uh, disaster among the general population, they just sent all the trucks across that bridge. It was a safety valve. It's also, the, it links the city of Baltimore. It links millions of people to jobs back and forth. This has put a strain on the traffic, forget that. The tunnels, were, uh, the tunnels underneath the water was already crowded and jammed. Now it would be impossible. And where are these trucks hauling these containers of, of really flammable and toxic and dangerous chemicals. 
Are they going to have to go through the tunnels also with the rest of the general public? You're, this is a, a recipe for disaster if we have a major incident. And we could, believe me. More people on edge trying to get to work every day and the traffic jams. You're going to have to... They are saying now people are going to have to leave home three hours early just to get to work every day because of the impo now that that bridge is gone. There's no relief of the pressure. This is quite interesting. So we're watching the, the Baltimore Bridge and what this means. Also, the fertilizer, that's so much of it, which needs to get to the farmers in the heartland of America, can't go. There's, there's literally containers sitting on the dock of the, uh, the, that can't go now onto uh, barges to go down the riverway because the bridge has collapsed in the middle of the way. This is, a, this is an absolute, and it's time for the farmers to go to the fields. So we are dealing with something very, very strange right now and very, very um, uh, way outside the norm. You know, we think about how many times have we warned about um, there could be a, a catastrophic event, a terrorism type event on America. How many times have we said there's so many people that have come across the southern border now? And we don't know who all these people are. They weren't vetted. They're coming from different nations. Some of the people are just good people looking for work, trying to make a, a better life for their family. I understand that. But not everybody coming has that intention. We know that some are jihadis being sent from almost every nation in Africa and the Middle East. We know that the Chinese are sending them in by the thousands. Uh, middle, all of them, middle-aged, excuse me, military-aged men. They're not families. They're not coming in families. They're just men in their early 20s, already been trained and ready to go, and they're coming by the thousands. So you have to know that eventually these 9 to 10 million people that have come in since the Biden administration took office, you got to know that there's a percentage of that are people jihadis or communists or haters of America who are going to be systematically planted throughout the country and they're going to have vital jobs like maybe they have jobs on the barges or on the ships maybe they're going to be trained to be airplane pilots maybe they're going to be trained to be um have jobs in the military and get uh, opportunity maybe some of them are going to be trapped air traffic controllers maybe some of them are going to work on the power grid have access to the some may work at water treatment plants some may work in the uh oil wells offshore in mexico uh new uh, off the in the gulf of mexico some may do this some may do that they're going to get spread out you know this already and uh if there's a master plan which you pretty well know there is then once you get every when you get the trojan horse in place just like in the days when you've got fully invaded, then you can launch the assault. And you start wondering, is this bridge collapse? It ain't a bridge collapse. And it was a huge barge with 10,000 containers on it, a ship carrying 10,000 containers running right into the bridge and taking it down, hitting the, the pylon, which was the support system. So the question is, is that the beginning? Is that just the beginning? We have to ask Mike from around the world. You guys know this. We have to ask Mike from around the world, what else is coming? Uh, what else could be coming? Uh, it does, um, it, it, it warrants the question. And then we have what has happened. Uh, as a matter of fact, what has happened to the United States? Are we friends with Israel or not? Are we standing with our ally or not? Well, uh, a major event took place, of course, during Purim, during the night of Purim. A major event took place when the United States um, literally, I mean, th there was a resolution 
on the table at the uh, Security Council there at the UN, okay? And uh, this was significant because what we had there, give me one second here, what we had there was, uh, we never, we haven't seen this before. America has always voted to stand with Israel, always. They've never went against them. They've always stood there with them. So this is a very, very um, concerning, to, to say that is not even the right word, extremely concerning situation that um, at the United Nations. Let me read this, what happened. And then I just got a phone call from Israel Hall a minute ago because France has just done something never heard of before. But let me read this first. Um, the UN has allowed a, ga a Gaza ceasefire resolution to pass at the United Nations. Who did? The U.S. allowed it. What does that mean? It means this. Following several failed attempts over five months of Israel's devastating war in Gaza, the United Nations Security Council on Monday evening finally passed a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire. The United States, which had been the only remaining hurdle to such a call, decided not to strike down the resolution, but instead abstain from the vote. The vote came as a shock to Israel, which saw its decades old ally, the United States, abstain rather than veto the move. And as it has consistently done over the years, always standing with Israel. In its diplomatic backing of the Jewish state, Israeli officials lambasted the resolution, saying they have no intention um, of ceasefire. More than 32,000 people have been killed in Gaza in this operation, and Israel has that Israel launched after Hamas led the militant attack in the country on October 7th. When Hamas attacked Israel, they killed over 1,200 people, we know, and took over 250 people hostage. Now, Israel criticized the language of this resolution, saying it doesn't firmly tie a ceasefire to the freeing of the hostages held in Gaza, which has always been the, 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 the situation. In other words, Israel's been saying, you release all the hostages, we'll have a ceasefire. But Hamas has refused to release the hostages. Thus, Israel is not going to do a ceasefire. They're going to continue to put the hammer down and try to uh, eliminate Hamas from the face of the earth, basically. So, um, this, this resolution called for an unconditional ceasefire no hostages nothing israel stand down and the vote was 14 to 0 with the united states abstaining from the vote this is the first time this has happened in the 76 year history of the united states and and israel's as a nation the relationship had never been broken but it has now and it happened the night of purim the night that we celebrate Esther going in before the king and pleading her case for her people, of the, 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 the children of Israel, because wicked Haman wanted to have all the Jews murdered. And so the very night that we celebrate Esther's victory over Haman and, and, the, and the saving of her people Israel, the United States became the Haman. The United States, under the Biden administration, betrayed the Israeli people. And this is a concern because God told us in the book of Zechariah, don't, don't you touch the apple of God's eye. In other words, don't do this. Don't ever do this when this is God's chosen people and the land of Israel, of course, being his, uh, the land that he has decided would be the Holy Land would be the place where, of course, the 
the, the 12 tribes of Israel would live. It would be the place where the Messiah would be born in the little town of Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, of course. It would be the place where Christ would then preach his gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the demons, and stand up against the, uh, uh, the, the wickedness of sin. It would be the very place where Christ would give his life on the cross for the sins of the world. He would share, of course, before that, the prayer in the garden. He would, he would certainly take the communion with his 12 disciples. He would be arrested and then beaten before putting a, a nail to the cross. He would die for the sins of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then, of course, on the third day, which we're going to celebrate this coming Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, Christ would break the, break the chains of, of death. He would crush hell's gates. He would come out of the tomb with victory over death, hell, and the grave. And we celebrate that. But in the very holy week, the very holy week, we have the first, the most worst betrayal in our nation's history. The Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Gilead Erdan, criticized the UN Security Council for passing this measure. Oh, by the way, America abstaining is not the only nation that did Israel dirty. So did the French. So did the, the, the British, the Russians, the Chinese. Matter of fact, there was 15 nations. 14 of them voted against Israel, and only America abstained but allowed it to happen because America had a veto vote. They could have stopped it. Um, but the fact that the, the, the Israel ambassador criticized the Security Council for passing a measure that called for a ceasefire without the condition of the release of the hostages. It, it undermines the efforts to secure their release, he said to the United Nations. The foreign minister of Israel, meanwhile, said on X that his country would not abide by this resolution. The state of Israel will not cease fire, he said, but we will destroy Hamas and continue to fight it until the last of the hostages are fully, are finally returned home. Some of these hostages are Americans even. That's even worse. That means we're turning our back on our own citizens as well. But we shouldn't be shocked by that because we did leave our citizens in Afghanistan. We are abandoning our citizens right now in Haiti. And we don't see no effort to free the U.S. hostages that are still in the hands of Hamas. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu re retaliated for the U.S. Uh, abstaining by canceling a scheduled trip to the U.S. for two of his top advisors and the Israeli National Security Advisor, uh, both of them a member of the War Cabinet, had been scheduled to travel to Washington and to meet with the President of the United States and the Defense and the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State on that very Monday night. But when this happened during the day, Israel canceled the meetings. On the ground, right now, I think there is no immediate effect. The, according to the IDF, they continue to go forward to try to destroy Hamas and to release the hostages that were taken on that dreadful day, October 7th, 20. 23 this UN resolution I want to know what Mike around the world thinks about this tonight now that this has happened because Mike is the one who's been saying that they're going to try to disarm Israel they're going to try to disarm them well guess what we got another report tonight from the Pentagon that the Department of Defense the DOD uh, has been discussing plans to fund a peacekeeping force in Gaza made up of a multinational soldiers. 
you just heard me right. The Palestinians, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, the, the Pentagon, the, the, uh, the Pentagon has had its discussions and are making plans to create a multinational force that would be implemented and put into Gaza to rule over Gaza. Uh, if it isn't a multinational force, it will be a Palestinian peacekeeping force, which that's outrageous. Uh, and, but, he's, but the Pentagon is saying, but, no, but don't worry, there will be no U.S. troops on the ground. <laughs> okay, let me see if I got this right. Israel is, when Israel finishes this war and defeats Hamas, do you really think they're going to turn the whole Gaza Strip back over to a new army of Palestinians who are funded and, and uh, trained and armed by the United States from the U.S. Pentagon is now going to form a Palestinian army against Israel? I mean, I, you got to be kidding me, right? And if it isn't a Palestinian army, it's going to be a multinational army. Here's what, uh, you, you've got to be kidding. I, I would never thought I would hear this one. But then again, I remember when Barack Obama was president of the United States. He, uh, before he chose Samantha Power to be the UN ambassador for the United States, she was on the Dick Cabot show in 2002. I watched the video clip of it. Dick Cabot said to her, what if you were one day asked to become the ambassador of the United Nations for the United States? What would you, what would you suggest to the president of the United States we should do to bring peace to the Middle East? She said, I would say to the president, you need to send in military troops internationally uh, filled with multi nations including the americans she said and let them police between the jews and the palestinians she said this in 2002 president obama was elected in 2008 he was re-elected in 2012 when he was he chose samantha power to be the ambassador to the united nations and the very thing that is now coming to pass today was what she said has to be done or what she would recommend be done, even though she isn't in the UN no more and even though Obama's not the president no more. Biden's the president, but he was Obama's vice president. This policy, this anti-Israeli policy is what is in play and you're watching it. And matter of fact, that's why I believe Hamas felt, felt liberated, felt vindicated to go ahead and attack the Jews, to kill 1,200 innocent Israeli citizens, to burn babies alive, to murder and butcher and rape and kill. And it, I mean, they feel vindicated. They feel that they have the right to do it because there is a ideology. And actually, this, is, this takes you to the Bible. And this is what we've been told. You guys have been watching me now for over 14 years, you know that I told you this day was coming. I told you that they would turn one day that the whole world would turn its back on Israel. I told you that there would be wars and, and, uh, and, and there'd be battles right in the Holy Land. I told you that there would be a push for the red heifers, that there would be the, 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 the pre getting prepared to build the third temple. I told you that those things would all would cause a massive reaction within the Islamic world and matter of fact more than just the Islamic world the whole world I even said the United States unfortunately we hope to God they wouldn't do it but they would eventually turn their back on Israel you're seeing that happening right now and it's a very serious thing we're going to ask Mike around the world what does this all mean we're going to ask him tonight uh, Israel then made a statement this afternoon. They said, here's what we can tell you, is when we're done defeating Hamas, we will remain 
completely in control of the Gaza Strip and all of Israel. There'll be no foreign troops. There'll be nobody from nowhere coming in here thinking they're going to rule over top or take control of the nation of Israel. So they have sent a rejection of that entire thought. Now, Israel Hall sent me a text, and I'm going to read it to you because this just happened in Paris, France. Um, this just happened. Here it is. This just happened. France said they are now working on a United Nations Security Council resolution calling fire and the recognition of a Palestinian state. Okay, so now America just abstained to allow a resolution to go through and be passed calling for Israel to stand down in a ceasefire. Now, Emmanuel Macron and the French have, which are also one of the five permanent members, you have to understand, the Security Council of the UN is made up of 15 nations, five of them are permanent members, they have veto power. And those five nations are the United States, the Russians, the Chinese, the British, and the French. Now that this door has opened, now that Biden has opened this door, Emmanuel Macron has come ra raging through it. And there's the headline, see if you can see it. Uh, France said to be working on the UNSC, that's United Nations Security Council resolution calling for the ceasefire and recognition of a Palestinian state, a two state solution. In other words, going ahead and declaring that there is now two states and that, that Israel is going to have forcibly have the land taken from them in a two state solution. No nation in the world with the United Nations say, we're gonna go in and divide this country from a sovereign nation. They're not gonna do it. You gotta let people work out their own differences, even if it means war. Well, just right now, we have a situation. The Russians have been fighting Ukraine for two years. The Ukrainians are saying that the Russians are trying to take Eastern Ukraine. The Russians are saying, we are taking it. We have taken it. We're never good. We've got it. It is now part of Russia. Now, the United Nations hasn't voted on any of this. They haven't said, Russia, you're out of order. They haven't said, Ukraine, you might as well let it go. They haven't voted on how to draw the border lines and try to bring up into this war. I mean, you know, and we have seen situations where the wars have to determine where borders are, where boundaries are. This has went on forever. Um, this is why I'm saying tonight that this is a whole different thing. France, and they're going to vote on this. And let me just tell you, say something. Will the United States abstain again? Are they going to, is, is Joe Biden... And the United States of America, the current administration, who represents our country, whether we like it or not, is, is the Biden administration going to do another passive move and say we abstain, allowing this vote now to go to the floor of the UN General Assembly and to force a two-state solution on Israel? How many times have you guys heard me in 14 years say that this day was coming? How many times? I mean, I've been to Israel 11 times. I was at the Knesset. Let me just tell you what happened. This was in 2015 or 2016. It was 2016. And uh, I went to, to interview Rabbi Yehuda Glick, who at the time was a member of the Knesset. And he'd already been shot and survived all that. And, and so now I'm going, I'm in the Knesset. I'm getting through the security and I'm walking into his office and I sat down in his office we set up the cameras and I start interviewing him and I said to him Rabbi uh, I said Rabbi Glick let me just say to you do you realize right now that there's 20 nations right now today 
in Paris, France, who are drawing up the new borders for a two-state solution. Do you realize that's happening right now? It's not binding because it's not, they don't have any power, but they're sitting there drawing it up now, how they would divide it up. And I'll never forget it. He slammed his desk. No, no, he said, that'll never happen. We will never be divided. I said, okay, I'm with you. Don't get mad at me. Don't, you know, I'm just telling you they're trying to do it. Okay. So here we are today. It's not they're trying to do it. They've put the res they're putting, they're getting ready. France is going to lead the way. They're going to put the resolution on the table. Now, if the United States votes no, it don't go nowhere. But if the United States votes yes, or if the United States just abstains, you can know this. It will pass and go to the floor of the General Assembly, and they will vote probably about 85% to part the land forcibly. And then, of course, they've already, we've already got the Pentagon tonight saying they want to fund a, a multinational army or better yet they, they're saying how about we just make a Palestinian army guys you do understand what's happening here the Bible says in the book of, of uh, Zechariah uh, the Bible says no it's in the book of Joel chapter 3 that the Lord will bring the whole world down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and he will plead with the world at the Valley of Jehoshaphat, right there between the Mount of Olives and the Temple Mount, right there in that valley. And he will beg the world. God will beg the world, don't do this. Don't part the Holy Land. Don't do this. But folks, I say they are, they're, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. And this is what's going to bring about the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Now, there's not just this going on. Let's uh, also, you need to know that the red heifer, the red heifer, um, let me uh, pull this up right now. Give me one second here. Let me find my way. Okay, wait, wait, wait. let me find my way. I just had it, but I had to run over here and grab this. Let me tell you what's going on with the red heifer because some of you might have watched uh, the, the broadcast last night over at uh, Getting Ready. Um, we, uh, Melvin had a tremendous report on this by CBS News that uh, proves why this war, October 7th, even happened. It happened because um, the, the Islamic world, really, wants to stop the the sacrifice of the red heifer and the rebuilding of the third temple i'm going to show you a, a headline see if i can get it there it is by the middle east eye it says in the west bank settlement israelis tend the red cows or the red heifers and they plan the third temple this this meeting took place yesterday they held a conference in shiloh or in shiloh where the where four red heifers are still qualifying to be sacrificed and the ashes burned so they could be used for the dedication of the third temple they held a conference there that the uh, the temple institute were the ones that were leading the charge but they had leading rabbis there part uh, from the sanhedrin from the temple institute from some of the other organizations uh, in Israel uh, and they, they held a conference they looked at the the, uh, re, the red heifers and they've started the process of preparing for this ceremony they've even built the ramp it's already done that you would take the cattle the cow the red cow up the ramp to be sacrificed on this altar by the uh, Cohen priest the priests have to be uh, from the, tri literally, their bloodline has to be from the tribe of Levi. They have to be virgins, and they have to uh, do this uh, ritual sacrifice and the burning of the ashes according to the, exactly to the scriptures 
found in the book of Numbers chapter 19 that God had commanded them to do. We've talked about this for years. I've talked about this for 40 years since I've been in the ministry. I can't believe the ramp is built. I can't believe they found red heifers that qualify. I can't believe now that red heifers are of age. The, the red heifer that gets sacrificed has to be at least two years and two months old. All four of them just turned two years and two months old. They don't, so they, don't, they can't be younger than two years and two months, but they can be older than that. So they had to be two years and two months just to qualify. They now all four qualify. They can just pick one of the four right now. The, the ramp has been built. The ceremonies, the training of these young priests has been going on for some time. They have them. The, the, they are about to do it. And according to uh, the Hamas, that the reason Hamas is saying that they attacked Israel on October 7th, the reason they did it is because of these, the red heifer. Because they realized they're about to burn the ashes. They're about to get everything ready. And then once they get those ashes, there's nothing else left. They've got everything they need. I've been to the Temple Institute four times. I've seen the golden uh, altar. I've seen the golden menorah. I've looked right at the golden shoebread table. I looked at the seven silver trumpets that the priest will blow. I looked at the priest, the high priest garment, including his headdress and of crown and his breastplate of the 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Each stone, a precious stone, uh, matching this, the scriptures. Uh, look, they've, they've got everything. All of the utensils, all of the instruments, all of the uh, necessary uh, items that are needed. The only thing that we, they don't show you is where's the Ark of the Covenant, and they have that according to the rabbis that I've talked to. They definitely have it, and they said, you'll see it. Once the temple's built, we'll have seven priests carry it out just like they did in the days of Joshua, just like they did and when King David saw the, ten, the Ark of the Covenant being brought back to Jerusalem, and David danced before the Lord. You're going to see the Ark of the Covenant carried in and put into the Holy of Holies of the Third Temple. Now, I say all this to say this. We don't need it. Uh, as, as a Christian, we know that Jesus Christ is the Passover Lamb. We know that Christ is the Son of God, and that He gave His life for our sins, and that His blood is precious. And that even Apostle Paul told us that the blood of bulls and 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 the, and heifers and uh, and goats and anything other animal, none of this can cleanse our soul. Only the blood of Jesus Christ. This we know. But that doesn't stop the prophecy of the building of the third temple and the soon coming of Jesus Christ. That, that is prophecy that is going to happen. Now I remember, on the, I, I remember this, talking to three prominent Bible prophecy men that I think you have to stop and listen. First, let's say 2015, the interview I did, you can watch it right here on YouTube with Dr. Chuck Misler. It's just a few months before he dies. It's the only time I ever got to interview him. And in the interview, I asked him, and, he, and it's a great interview. He talks about a lot of things. Uh, and I asked him, what is the next biblical milestone that you see happening? And after a long pause, he said, either Ezekiel 38 or Psalms 83. One will ignite the other. Which one comes first? He said, it's like the chicken and the egg. But it's going to happen. Um, after these things, you may see the building of the third temple. But he said, certainly there's going to be a war. A world war. And it's going to come right out of the Middle East. Now, I asked the question to Dr. Irvin Baxter, who I became very close to. And 
was on he was on eight of my television shows and I was on two of his television shows and I spent a lot of time in his office on a couple different occasions and had several dinners with him and even my last time I met with him in person was in a breakfast that he and his wife and me and Heidi had with them in Jerusalem in November of 2019 and I asked him I said what is the the next big thing we're going to see Dr. Baxter he said well you're going to see the signing of the Abraham Accords and it's going to sign he said in the fall of 2020 you're going to see it and when you see these nations signing and beginning this covenant of many he said then then you're getting ready to move into the next level where an antichrist will be getting himself in position to help bring about a two-state solution and the signing of this covenant with many to part the land you'll see this and this will cause great conflict on the earth and there will be soon the red heifers will be sacrificed and the building of the third temple and he said all these to me at a breakfast in 2019 in uh, november of 2019 dr Irvin baxter his prediction of the signing of the abraham accord was dead on it happened that next september president donald trump orchestrated it with sudan with um let me think for a minute because my mind can't remember um there was there was three uh, uh the united arab emirates and bahrain and then morocco joined in a little bit later and uh and serbia joined in a little bit later there were five nations you already had egypt and jordan were already part of this agreement egypt signed in 1979 with jimmy carter and jordan signed in 1994 with bill clinton and then trump gets five nations to sign now you have seven nations the abraham accord incredible incredible dr baxter predicted it exactly and then Dr. Baxter on election day, November the 3rd, 2020, after getting COVID, four days later, he died on election day at about noon. He had told me before he got sick, I asked him if he would come on the air before the election and talk about the, the next phase because the the peace agreement had been signed just like he predicted i said now won't you come on and tell us what's next what's next and he um he said i will i'll come on but after the election i'll let you know what's going on after the election i froze right now so i don't know what's happened here i don't know if i'm still live or not I'm frozen completely. Hmm. Oh, here I'm. I'm back. Am I back? Maybe it's just mine. Do you know, Lexi, if I'm still alive? I'm Hang on, everybody. I think I'm back. It You're comes back. back. Huh? You're, you're frozen. I'm frozen. Am I, am I, am I back or not? Oh. It's like I'm trying to get free. What's wrong? Where's the problem? You can, can you guys hear me? Okay. So maybe I'll come, but they can still hear me right now. Okay. So guys, you can see we're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. Um, just uh, pray that we can get uh, completely back so you can see. Um, but as long as you can hear me, we'll just keep going. Right, right, Lex? We're still on? Okay. So Dr. Baxter says, this is what's going to happen. And he said, I said, would you come on the air on a Thursday night before Mike Around the World? Would you come on and tell us what you think is going to take place? He said, I'll do it, but I, I'm not going to do it till after the election because it depends who wins. 
is going to determine the path. We're either going to go this path or we're going to go this path. We're going to wind up in the same place. It won't matter. But it depends, it, but to, to understand the path. So he agreed to come on the air. He was, he was going to come on November the 17th, 2020, and tell us what the Lord showed him. But he died on November 3rd, 2020, on Election Day. And so we don't know what God showed him. The Lord instead took him home. Dr. Jack Van Impe was the third uh, great prophetic voice who I talked to in 2017. Twice he and I had a lengthy telephone call because he was sick, near death, and was in the bed. I'd never had a conversation with him before, never met him, watched him forever on television. He called me from his from his deathbed, you might as well say, because he died in January of, of 2018. And this was December of 2017. So this is about a month before he died. Am I still live? Because my screen has went completely black. I hope we're still on. Man, can still hear you. you can still hear me. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is crazy. As long as you can hear me, we'll be all right. Maybe the maybe the picture will come back. You know. Okay, mine is black with the ticker tape just running at the bottom. <laughs> this is crazy night. Probably what the, the probably what I'm talking about is so powerful that it's freaking out the internet. Um. So Jack Benneby calls me on the phone and he says, I love your show. I've been watching you. I love what you do. I want you to keep doing it. Don't stop. Keep doing it till the Lord returns. Keep getting people saved. And I said, Dr. Dr. Van Impey, can you tell me what's, what's going to happen? He said, well, first of all, they're going to build the third temple and they're going to build it soon. And I really want to see it. I really want to see it. Okay. I got a lot of different things going on here. It's crazy. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to log out. It says you're about to log out. I don't want to log out. What is going on? Am I still live? Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Okay. I'm still here. Uh, okay. The, um, he said they're going to build the third temple. They're going to build the third temple, Paul. And uh, I want to see it. I want to see it because I know this means our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will soon be coming. If they build the temple, Paul, he's coming back within three and a half years of the building of the temple. So in other words, I think Jack, I, Jack was always pre-trib, always pre-trib, but I think that uh, in his mind, maybe late in, the, late in his life, he thought, he, he had a different thought on it and said, once the temple was built, that Jesus would return at the midway point. Um, I'm not sure why he went there, but he did. He said, I want to see it. I want to see it, but I don't think I'm going to make it. But you will. He said, you will. So go tell the world. Go preach the gospel. Keep doing what you're doing. And get as many people saved as you can. You're going to see it. So here we are tonight. And they're about... We, it, it, this is unbelievable because Jack Van Impey died in 2018, in January 2018. Chuck Misler died in the early 2016. And then Baxter, of course, died on Election Day 2020. These three guys all, and now I've got conversations going with Jim Baker, another man of God who has telling me the things he sees happening right now. 
And we've also talked about the third temple. We've talked about these things. He's focused on the four horsemen of the apocalypse very strong. He sees them galloping. He sees them about ready to... He sees World War III upon us. And that's why I wrote the book. Can they see me yet, Lex? That's why I wrote the book, Revelation 9-11. Because the Lord told me to write it. Because it's upon mankind. Apollyon's about to come out of the bottomless pit. And he's going to bring about World War III, the Sixth Trumpet War. And so... Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Will the war be first? Will World War III be first? Or will Israel go ahead and sacrifice the heifer and go ahead and build the third temple and then we have World War III? Is that what happens in the 42 months after the temple's built? Is that what it means when Jesus said there'll be a time of tribulation the such of which the world has never seen before nor ever again? Or will we have the war first? Like Misler said. And then after the war, we have the red heifers are sacrificed. And then the third temple is built. And then the Antichrist walks into the temple before the worshipers of God and declares that he is God. That's going to happen also. You can't stop it. The mark of the beast is coming. And I believe as Christians, we have to be ready for our Lord to come. We don't know the day nor the hour that he's going to come, but we know that he's coming. So tonight we're, we're having this uh, very powerful broadcast. I don't know why my screen is black. Is it black now? No, it's just frozen on your picture. Okay. But they can hear me. So it's almost like a radio broadcast in a way. Mike from the world is going to join us tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, curious about his thoughts about all these things. Also, while this is going on, I just got breaking news that Baltimore, in Baltimore, uh, Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, uh, has said that uh, the United States government is going to spend $60 million on emergency funds immediately. And then there's going to be more. The, the, there's a thousand engineers that are being sent to Baltimore. Many of them are from the Army Corps of Engineers to try to figure out a way to deal with the uh, this catastrophe. How to how to clean up the broken bridge and build a new bridge as fast as possible because the economy is going to take a major hit because of this catastrophe. And if you were going to do a, a, a terrorist attack to cripple America's food supply chain, there's two things you would do. Number one, you would knock down the Baltimore Bridge. And number two, you would blow up the largest fertilizer factory in America. And both those things happened the same night, four hours apart. We've already had how many food processing plants burn to the ground or blow up? We've already had incredible, incredible amounts of food packaging, food processing, we are really, folks, now find ourselves just how vulnerable we are. And meanwhile, as I've said, we've got a lot of terrorists that have come into this country through the southern border. We've allowed that to happen. We have set ourselves up for a catastrophe. And the only thing I see happening is three presidents in New York tonight holding a big fancy uh, fundraiser where they're going to raise $25 million to keep one other president out of the White House. So you have Obama, Biden, and Clinton are all together tonight with a bunch of celebrities. They brought in every celebrity in Hollywood. They brought in entertainment from everywhere. They're raising $25 million this big gala in New York City tonight. And 
but we've got serious problems that has to be addressed. So we need to pray for our country. We need to really pray for our country. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but tonight, I can tell you, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a crazy time. A couple more things just before Mike comes tonight. One, in South Africa, a bus went off a bridge. I hate to bring up another bridge. But it went off the bridge and killed 45 people. They went way down in a ravine, and 45 people are dead. Also, in Haiti, it's absolute anarchy and chaos, and, and gangs are running wild, and people are being murdered everywhere in the streets. And Kenya is supposed to send their army to Haiti to police the nation and get it under control. But the, the Kenyan soldiers don't want to go. They said, we don't want to go to that. We don't want to be in the middle of that. It's That's so dangerous, you're crazy. So you got that going on. Also, remember Sam Bankman Freed, who embezzled what they believed to be about $9 billion of investors' money and the collapse of the FTX uh, company he built. He was just sentenced today to 25 years in prison for the um, for the embezzlement of the most money ever embezzled, ever done by a CEO of a company ever. And a lot of people lost their their savings accounts. They lost their retirement funds. They lost their homes. They lost a lot of stuff because this guy uh, spent the money. Also, we have a. Uh, in the Philippines tonight, the president of the Philippines, President Marcos, just vowed that he was going to smack China because China had injured some of his sailors on a ship out in the ocean uh, as the Chinese have been aggressive toward not only the Philippines, but they've been aggressive take going into people's airspace or going into people's waterways China's been very aggressive toward the Vietnamese. They've been aggressive toward the Philippines. They've been aggressive toward Micronesia. They've been aggressive toward Indonesia. They've been aggressive toward Japan. And of course, we know they're being aggressive toward Taiwan. But the Philippines, some of the sailors were, were injured and died. And so, as a matter of fact, China's been aggressive to us, the United States. But the president of the Philippines, President Marcos, said, oh, you're not going to do that to us. You're not going to bully us. I vow to pay you back for injuring my sailors who were in international waters, minding their own business. You came on in there and did this to them. So this is huge. We know the Philippines can't beat China, but it, you have to understand these these little countries are going to, are saying we're going to push back. You may you may you may take us, but you get ready because we're not going to just sit here and take this laying down. So good for President Marcos for for standing up for his nation. And one more thing, Whoopi Goldberg is in the news tonight because Whoopi said she knows for a fact that there's aliens among us. She's been talking to them something to keep in mind as well so we're in a different world guys we're in a we're in a different world i have to tell you right now i my screen is black and i can't see any comments but i'm live i have a, and and all i can see is that there's 5649 people here tonight i can see the ticker tape at the bottom running and i can't change anything i can't fix it i can't change it i can't i can shut it off but i'm not going to do that so whatever reason whoever got in here and messed me up i don't have a clue but i'll say this um we're 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 we're, we're going to stay live just like this am i frozen still so i'm just frozen to the rest of the people I don't move with the ticker. <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? What about the comments? People, and I can't see one of them. No. Okay. 
it says there's been over 1,032 comments already, and I can't see any of them. But anyway, so I'm kind of talking in the dark. It's what, I, it's what it feels like to me. I'm just in the dark. Only person I can talk to is Lexi over here, okay? So she'll keep, she'll keep an eye on Just let me know, Lexi, as long as we stay live, then we'll stay live. Mike's going to join us, so let's play a song. We'll be back, guys, in a few minutes uh, with Mike from around the world. We got to find out what Mike thinks about the Baltimore Bridge. Who really did this? Who really did this? Was it an accident? Was the ship hacked? Can ships be hacked? Can planes be hacked? Can cars be hacked? Remember Barack Obama's movie that came out, Leave the World Behind? Did you ever see it, Lexi? Barack Obama came out with a movie um, a few months ago called Leave the World Behind. It's an apocalyptic end of the world movie. In the movie, a big, huge ship gets hacked and comes roaring ashore, running, just crashing and running people out of control. Nobody could control it. It was hacked. Okay? And when that happened in that movie, I'm thinking, they, they can't do that. That can't happen. Did that, is that what happened in Baltimore? That's, the guys that were on the boat were saying, we're, for an hour, they said, they were screaming on the phones, we're not in control of this boat. Somebody's in control. Somebody's steer, turning it. Somebody's speeding it up and slowing it down. It's not us. They were screaming. Did somebody hack the boat? And if so, who was it? Was it the Russians? Remember, Vladimir Putin, because of that Moscow massacre, 133 people killed, 115 injured. Putin said the Americans have done this and vowed to pay us back. And less than a week later, the ship called the Dolly took down the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. I'll be right back in just a moment with more on the coming apocalypse. I've never seen this before. Check it out.
That's Israel Hall, of course, on our brand new album, Harmonize and Prophesy. We apologize for the technical difficulties tonight. We don't know if it's from a solar flare. We don't know. Lexi and I are totally stunned. She can, uh, but my screen is frozen, as you can see. But for me, broadcasting, all I see is a black screen with the ticker tape at the bottom scrolling. I can see no comments except a little ticker on the side telling me how many comments have been made, which it says 1,484 comments. I can see that there's 5,777 of you watching, and li I should say listening. So we're okay, other than I can't, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is after I get Mike on here is I'm gonna take this other phone I have and and actually go there to see if I can see this, the the uh, read the comments from the phone because I can't read it from the computer. Really crazy tonight. I've not seen this one. This is a new one. We've been broadcasting 14 years, live programs, never seen this before. You guys can see me on the screen frozen, but I can't even see that, okay? But I know you guys are out there. Uh, also, let me just say real quick before Mike comes, Revelation 9-11, uh, doing doing very well. We want to thank all of you. Keep uh, if you haven't got yours ordered, please do that. Order five of them. You're going to need it because you're going to want to give four of them away to people that you believe could, this could really be. They'll like it. They'll want to read it. It's very interesting. We're right now ranked number eight uh, at Amazon.com in the category Church and State. The book is also ranked number eight in the category New Testament Commentaries, and it's ranked number 24 in the uh, category Christian Spiritual Warfare. Um, six times it has went number one in one of these three categories. Each of these three categories at some time or another it's went number one in them. And so it's doing very well, we're very happy. Now, there's only been eight customer reviews so far. If you, if you, if you can, if you would go to amazon.com and scroll down and find where there's customer reviews and and if you would leave a customer review it's really really good it helps us um and there was some wonderful reviews in there i read them tonight and i was i was encouraged how much it was helping you um only had one negative one but that's okay um so but the more of you go and the more of you if you want if you feel this is a good book uh, and you want to give it a five star we really really appreciate that because the the better the stars the better the algorithms at Amazon then more that Amazon will promote it and put it on different pages and try to promote the book so we appreciate if you do if you get the chance to go and do a review even if you haven't read the book all the way through if you've read a, two three chapters and you know and you, you would like to go do a review we would really appreciate that okay also tonight I want to thank all of you for your tithe and offerings tonight thank you for being faithful as we're in this holy uh holy week as we're going into uh miss heidi why don't you you should go in there and lay down okay darling okay okay <laughs> all right she kind of went to sleep um there would be really really good uh tonight i want to thank you already for so many of you being so faithful in your tithe and offering thank you so much thank you for being so faithful in, in placing your order for the revelation 9 11 book and you can still get the webinar tickets if you want to don't miss this webinar and we're getting a ton of response from people saying this was unbelievable unbelievable and the same thing we're getting about our book revelation 9 11 it's filled with information filled with information and people are like i am blown away and i'm going back to read and one person said i read your book pastor in one night one setting and now i'm starting a second time because i gotta what you're gonna need to do you're gonna need to get a highlighter and start highlighting the key points that you don't want to forget because you want to remember it, you want to talk to somebody else about it, you want to share it, you want to be able to go quickly, find it in the book. So, uh, again, if, if the Lord leads you to, 
Go order five of these. People are getting their books every day now. They're shipping everywhere. And uh, you can get it at Amazon.com. Or if you don't like to buy from Amazon, you can go get it at BarnesandNoble.com. Or you can order it from BooksAmillion.com. Or you can order it from Target.com. Or you can order it from Goodreads.com. Or you can order it from Walmart.com. Or a lot of independent bookstores. And it is also being carried in several hundred bookstores across the country. Not every Barnes & Noble, though, is, has it on their shelf. If you walk into your local Barnes & Noble or Book, Books A Million, if you see it on the shelf, then great. If you don't see it, go and ask, are they, why don't they have it? And ask them to, they should put it on the shelf. It's a great book. About half the Barnes & Noble stores are carrying the book, but half of them aren't. Um, so help me out here, guys. Wake them up out there, okay? We appreciate that greatly. All right. All right. So any moment here, Mike Around the World is going to uh, join us. It's going to be, uh, I really, you know, you've heard me talk about this. Baltimore Bridge, the UN resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza that the United States let slide. The DOD, uh, you know, talking about putting troops into Gaza, multinational force, or maybe Palestinian uh, force. Uh, you heard me uh, tell you that <clears throat> Israel said, no, no matter what, we don't care what anybody says, we will continue to control Gaza. We're, there's not going to be nobody else coming in here to police it. We're going to handle it. Uh, the Red Heifer is very close to being ceremony to happening. Uh, this means they have everything they need to start the third temple. Uh, there's a lot going on. And then now you got the French. You have tonight the, in France, Emmanuel Macron saying he just put it on the table. I showed it to all of you. Maybe that's when the lights went out. I don't know. Basically, everything froze after that. But I showed you what France is going to do. They're going to put it. They've already put it on the, the floor. They're drafting a resolution to uh, mandatory ceasefire and a two-state solution to be implemented, calling for a Palestinian state. What if America doesn't veto that? What if we abstain again? That will go to the floor of the General Assembly and the world will vote whether or not to part the land of Israel. And France president is the one who's doing it. And it's amazing because Emmanuel Macron is the one guy that Dr. Irvin Baxter said uh, on television. He was I, I interviewed him on television. I said, do you have a top 10 list of who could be the, the Antichrist? He said, yeah, I do. I'm watching closely. And I said, well, who's, who's your number one? You know, He said, you know, you better keep your eye on Emmanuel Macron of France. This is unbelievable. Here we are tonight, and he's the one that wants to put it on the floor for the vote. Question is, will the United States abstain again? Will they, will they stand up and defend Israel? Are we on the brink of a holy war so large that is this... Are we on the brink of World War III. Mike from the world is going to join us any moment. We look forward to talking to him, getting his take on all of these. And of course, we've got an eclipse. I mean, it's unbelievable. And I didn't even get guys get a chance to tell you, but I already did an interview on CBN. I'm going to be on the Christian Broadcasting Network. It's going to be all over the world. It's a great interview. Both myself and Troy Anderson were interviewed by Gary Lane of CBN. And the night before the solar eclipse, Troy Anderson and myself will be on Coast to Coast with George Norrie. That's Sunday night, April 7th. And if you're in the, if you're in the West Coast, that's at midnight. If you're on the East Coast, that'll be at 3 a.m. It's the morning of the eclipse. They're bringing the two of us on for two hours 
to talk about the prophetic signs of this solar eclipse and what and all these other things that are happening so please be praying about that because that show gets an average every night an average of two million listeners and maybe that night it may even be bigger due to the facts okay i'm looking for mike on this call and i'm starting to wonder hopefully he's not been affected somehow so where or where could Mike from the world be, huh? So we're waiting for him any minute. Um, strange night tonight. Your screen is frozen. Mine is pitch black. And I can't even see any comments. But I do see that 7,326 of you are out there. I'm very interested in what Mike from the world is going to say tonight. I, we're, we're here we are you know we all know about this x marks the spot little egypt america these two solar eclipses going over top seven cities this one seven cities of nineveh is this america's nineveh moment well if it is we better get down on our knees and pray our leaders had better get on their knees and pray because of the seriousness of this situation um it really really is concerning uh, we're looking for Mike from around the world right now. I'm a little bit confused. I'm thinking maybe though he can't get through. I'm looking at this right now. Is that because I'm on? Oh, here he is. Let me just say I'm not. I'm not concerned anymore because joining us right now, folks, is Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Pastor Paul, doing well. God bless you. God bless you tonight, Mike. Um, my screen is frozen. Uh, the people are, can hear me good, and they're all there, and they and they have a chat room working. But for me, I have a black screen, no chat room. All I can do is see the ticker running on the bottom, and I can see there's seven thousand five hundred people. That's all I got. I got Mike. It's just me and you tonight. Okay, so here we go. Well, now you're operating like I normally operate. Uh, in the dark, right? In the dark. Right. All right. <laughs> Mike, uh, huge things are happening since you were here last Thursday night. Can we start with the Baltimore Bridge? Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've watched this video over and over and over, and it, it sure looked to me like this, this boat was hacked or somebody turned it straight at the pylon to i mean all right mike can they hack a boat can that be done well yeah those uh container ships right they yes are controlled by acipods or something of the like so that's a, that's an electronic uh ship right that's a totally total electronic ship so yes it can be hacked and in fact in fact uh, as of 2023, I believe it was uh, October, they were testing a system where when the, when the uh, ship comes in, uh, it could be controlled remotely, right, when it's in port like that. So uh, because normally they come in and the, the harbor pilot or uh, your, your harbor master would take, take the con of that ship, they would transfer uh, thrust and direction to uh you know to somebody in baltimore in this case <clears throat> and give commands for that ship while it was in in, in port so um once that captain ships control of steering thrusters and uh, propulsion um either on, a, on that uh, little control stand they have on the bridge it has a remote system connected with it if somebody were to hack the computer system they could block people out I do not believe it lost all power. That's almost impossible. I, I just can't see that scenario. Um, that's a, you're looking at a ship that is, you might as well say 100% electronic, right? To lose right. power means, you know, all 13 computer systems went down, uh, seven uh, APUs went down, the two generators went down. It's just too much stuff to go down. And if it did go down, then, then somebody, coordinated uh something to take it down you just can't you just don't shut power off to a ship like that 
No. I don't believe they lost power. I believe it was still, uh, you know, still under uh, some power, and and I believe they had some issues. But those ships can be hacked, right? Um, immediately when that ship wrecked, they came on television, um, and they shouldn't have done that, but they were trying to appease the public. I guess they think the public is uh, full of people with that. Uh, just buy anything that they said immediately they said this is there's no evidence of a terrorist attack right yeah they well, how here's could you problem. yeah how can yeah. you say that in in one hour right here's probably in order to declare that you have to know what the cause actually was you you can't declare was no terrorist attack and you haven't had the NS, um, you haven't had the proper agencies check out the computer systems the uh, you know affiliated control mechanisms and personnel you just can't do that and so um, yeah that was uh, I thought that was uh, kind of a dead giveaway you know you say something like that to kind of change direction in the conversation so uh, yeah I, I do believe that uh, something nefarious took place I don't believe it was a uh, what they suspected was at the beginning but I just can't see that happen no I'm with you I don't either and and I, I did see when uh, when the boat was... And folks, I'm sorry, Mike has turned up as high as I can get him tonight. We're having technical difficulties here. I got him cranked up as high as I can. So, you know, turn yours up as high as you can. Maybe even uh, go to your settings and, and adjust your input and your output to the max, okay? And, and bear with us, okay? It, it'll work out. Uh, Mike, the... The, the boat also, this ship also, I did see the lights go off and then back on, off and back on. But then I seen the ship turn. And when it turned, it turned toward the, the main structural pylon. And, it, and then you see black smoke roaring out of it because it cranked up its propulsion and just gunned it. Um, and I know these guys running this ship didn't do this, okay? They're screaming for over an hour that they didn't have control of it. So somebody did. Either the thing went, AI took over? Did AI take over? Did Russia do it because uh, Putin said he was going to pay us back for the massacre he thought was us? Um, is it a terrorist attack? Is there, We've had 10 million People come across the southern border and they got jobs working everywhere now. We've talked about this a lot. What is your thoughts, Mike? I mean, I know you can't, we, we, we're just speculating here, but what is your gut telling you, or what intel may you have? Well, think about this basketball with, with a ship like that, right? A, a ship that big. And um, let's take, a, let's take a, 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 a ship like the um, Ernst Kramer or something like that about the same thing. These ships have azipods on the bottom, right? Or, or these thruster pods. And what they are, normal ships, the old ships had propellers, right? Two, two propellers, one propeller, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these new ships can have up to 13 to 20 azipods on the bottom. What they are is individual uh, thrust pods, right? So that ship can actually turn in any direction on a dime. Right? Okay. In, in without without changing its orientation, and so it can it can go left, it can go right, it can go backwards, it can go forward, whatever the case is. Smoke did billow out of that ship prior to um, it impacting the bridge, uh, but that that generator, anything with an as upon the generator, explicitly supplies power to the ship. Right? It doesn't go to the propellers uh it supplies power to the ships it generates electricity like a big city and then of course the azipods control that uh, thrust in this case that ship the currents were i checked the currents that's one of the first things i did the currents were kind of strong in that direction and it really looks like it looks like they just simply lost control and when i say lost control it means that means Somebody else could have be easily taken over. It's, it's, it's too convenient to lose control where it did. Uh, for nobody to respond, that was a that was what a four minute gap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and nobody responded, and so yeah, it, somebody or something happened 
to where these guys just did not have directional control of that ship. But the way these ships are made, I'll say it again, somebody could easily hack one of these ships. One of the biggest problems we have right now is trouble from the inside, not the outside. If in, in normal terrorist cases, you would think a threat would come from the outside, right? Yeah. Like somebody had to hack externally into the ship. Well, that ship, right, is, is um, the, the, the ship and the folks who work for that uh, company on that ship uh, you know, going back and forth to Singapore and various parts of the world. You don't know who they are. You just don't know who they are. And most of the terroristic threats that we've had in America this year alone, they don't talk about them. And they didn't talk about the ones last year because we're not talking about people from external countries. We're talking about people who are born here in this country. And that is a major, major, major problem. And I suspect it's going to heighten because of this Hamas-Israeli, the Hamas-Israeli conflict, past Paul, has heightened um, chatter to a level no one has ever seen before. No one has right. seen that much chatter behind that. It is a huge deal. Uh, people feel some weird conviction by way of Hamas. They do. And they would rather see, uh, they, they would just love to see Hamas be vindicated in the Middle East over Israel. We're talking about people who are here, right? Who are here in this country. Uh, their parents here in this country, born in this country. Their grandparents, the same thing. But they are loyal to their respective countries, right? Just because a person is foreign does not mean they were, they were uh, you know, born in a foreign nation. You have a lot of people over here that have roots especially since he's 23 me and all this DNA stuff, you have a lot of people who are loyal to whatever that DNA says they're from, right? Right. And ever since that has happened, it's almost, almost like the loyalty base in this country has been fractured deeply. It is a big problem. And so this shit, and I, I, I'll just make a bold statement, this is not going to be the last attempt, but things like this shit, Right? Well, they're going to take place more and more. Um, I suspect something is underway. I do. And I believe last time we were talking, I was telling you about that uh, that dream about that tablet. Remember that? Yes, I do. It was on the tablet in leadership. They were trying to get it to leadership, and it was, it was incredible. It was horrible because these guys, the plans they had laid out was on that tablet and here we are we have this boat issue and then we have another issue uh, in in florida and then we have uh well there are multiple issues and then with the eclipse i hate to say this but uh this is not the time for people to gather in in these large groups but, no uh, so oh, i suspect this is the beginning let's talk of, about of, florida of the one thing in florida we had this huge fertilizer plant uh, the largest one in America that caught on fire. It was four hours between that and the boat. And you know that the the ship, I mean, there's tons of fertilizer, and not just fertilizer, but hazardous material, chemicals. I mean, they, they made sure all that really, really dangerous stuff went across the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Right. Now what are they going to? So what what are they going to do now? I mean, our agriculture is in trouble. Where are they going to get enough? Can they get enough fertilizer and nutrients to plant this year? I mean, this is dangerous. Yes, it's pretty bad. You know what, Pastor? And it's funny too because of this boat. Now I can't tell you who. I cannot tell you who did this, but prior to the boat crashing, uh, somebody named the, the uh, um, elements of that event. Right, but but. 10 hours before it happened. So it was almost like pre, pre knowledge before this took place of that boat crash. Somebody knew about it, right? Somebody suspected uh, that would be the case. Now that can only be possible with planned events. And to take that further today, they made an emphasis to tell the public that they are, uh, you know, they're checking computers. They're checking to see if any of those employees had, had um, phones or cameras or uh, any electronic device in which someone could use the radio transmitter inside that device. You can take, you can hack a ship through any electronic device, even the ones that have no 
um, transmission or receiving, you know, technology, you can still utilize that device to send to to bounce radio signals and commands to infrastructure or intranets or extranets or um, you know internet based things. So they they made a point to tell the public, hey, we're, we we are. I believe it was a uh, was that. Uh, I was at the White House too, I believe. But they said they were checking to make to see if the employees had any electronic devices uh, that could have been used for terrorism or something like that. So they have an emphasis on the electronics of that ship, which should let everybody know they have checked many things out and it seems normal. Now the next best thing is that somebody went in there and hacked that system. Somebody did something with that system, uh, causing that ship to do what it did and there's not a mistake you can't make a mistake that big right not not like that uh not with all those uh folks on board i agree anyway yes i agree let's talk about israel for a minute because i you know before you came on i did explain about the u.n resolution that um that was put on the at the security council and for the first time ever, we we didn't stand with Israel. We just abstained and let this thing go through. Um, and and then then the the Pentagon this afternoon, the the DoD said that they are talking about creating a fund and uh, putting a plan together for a peacekeeping force that would be multinational, or could be just a Palestinian peacekeeping force that would be take care of Gaza after the war. Uh, (laughs) Israel responded and said, you're insane. There's nobody coming in here. We're going to rule and take care of Gaza ourselves." Okay. Uh, And so we got that problem. Then we have Israel. uh, You know, we have the red heifer. We'll get to the red heifer in a minute. We just heard that France... Emmanuel Macron uh, has just announced that they are working on a resolution that he wants to bring to the Security Council and to the, to the floor of the General Assembly that says Israel must cease fire and there must be, we need to re- re- do it now and recognize Palestinian state. He's putting that on the table. What if the United What if the United States decides not to even reject that? What if we abstain again? What's your thoughts on this? Uh, the Biden administration having abstaining. What did this just do to the relationship with the United States and Israel? Well, they already have a consensus. They already made up their minds, so to speak, Pastor Paul. They are going to disarm Israel. They're slowly approaching that. Uh, they're going to force uh, a type of peace you know in the middle east my way of israel and then other parties they're going to do this through uh, direct maintenance you could say right because uh, you know of course any peace policy you must have power to uh, keep the peace right right so they have to have armed elements uh, in that um, over there in strength to keep whatever peace they establish but as you can see clearly they have made up their minds in the word of God, right, all nations come against Israel, no exclusions. And in this case, we can see it as clear as day. If a country abstains, right, that just simply means uh, they're going to let everybody else make their make those decisions. Right. And the reason why we did that, the reason why the USA did that is because of the pushback from these these uh, folks who are sensitive to Hamas. Uh, it is, this is an important note. Um, these folks that are in charge, uh, the, you know, that was a real chicken move right there. Really yeah, was. yeah. It was because we're going to have pushback from those who are sensitive to Hamas anyway. Watch and see. Um, those in America, those people in America, who are who are loyal or or have these real deep emotions, they seem to have for Hamas, right? You cannot appease people like that. In, in fact, they should have done the opposite. They should have let everybody know exactly where they stand with our long-held policy of being allies to Israel all the way, right? To show those people who are loyal to Hamas 
this is the USA, this is not some foreign country. And our ideologies just don't change because, you know, they, uh, some of the young people don't like what the, you know, what's happening. You know, that, that's, that's how we lose our identity, is when we start trying to please these groups who hate the USA and who love the Middle East and these countries in the Middle East. So that was a huge mistake. But as you can see, they've already, that by, by not saying anything, they've already said they're against Israel, right? Yep. They have. Any ally out there, if it's in fact an ally, you put your foot down and say, no, we stand with, you know, our ally in this case. They should have said, no, we stand with Israel, knowing that we're the voice of authority for the Western world, right? We are. Yes. So why in the world would we abstain? For what reason? And I believe th there's no answer. You know, uh, leadership is, is, uh, is in bad shape. We all knew that. And this just proves the fact that through policies of compromise, not, not really peace, but compromise, um, you know, things are going to fail faster and faster. France, as I continually utter, France is untrustworthy, right? They, they are right. like, a, I'm not going to use any names, but they are untrustworthy. Their, their loyalty is towards in the end is towards their own survival they're like a friend who would love you to pieces until they themselves are threatened and then when they are right you're going to find they're not your friend they weren't your friend they were just you know they're looking out for themselves so france is that way by coming up with this forced peace deal right right forced they're peace. actually speaking to germany they're speaking to all those countries who want but this is newsflash. The world right now wants a forced peace in the Middle East. They don't want Israel to discuss it anymore. They don't want that. They want it forced. Yep. Now that's their sentiment. They want it forced. And they want that forced now. And you know, a forced peace deal is not peace. Uh, what this is is a hijacking of uh, a sovereign nation dividing it in half with the force brute force of the rest of the world's power and threat to israel um and so but this is what this is prophecy as you said earlier this is exactly what the bible said was was going to happen and we're watching it happen it started you know it, it's been going on a long time chuck schumer just kind of let the cat out of the bag when he stood up on the floor of the Senate and, and basically called for the overthrow of the Netanyahu government. He even called for the overthrow of the Israeli government, not just Netanyahu. So we, we had that. We've had the squad running around crying and whining. We've had all of this uh, protesting. And then we have a, an impotent president who's nowhere to be found, and, and that's by design. And we're abstaining, we're stepping back, we're going to let the world take care of it. And you're right, this forced peace, this, is, this could bring about tremendous war. And, and now it's going to take us to the red heifer. I want to come back to the red heifer first, and, because just today, as you know, they've already got the ramp done. It's built to do the sacrifice. They got the four red heifers. They're all qualified. They're now two years and two months old, so now they all qualify. They just had yesterday a conference in Shiloh on how to do the ceremony. They brought young Cohen priests, virgins, young men who were trained on how to do this procedure. They brought a bunch of them in. They're ready to go. Um, and the third temple is next. So you got all this happening, and Hamas says the reason they attacked Israel was because of the red heifers and the and the threat of the third temple. Do you see not only uh, the the world trying to force this two state solution, and you see the world disarming Israel? You've been telling us this for two months. Uh, are we about ready to see though a a major Middle East war? Are we on the brink of World War Three? Even what's your your thoughts? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, I know we've been, we've had wars and world wars, uh, you know, in our, in our time already, but we're at the brink of a severe war, right? I mean, a severe war, one that will 
just make all the other wars seem minuscule. And there is no avoidance to what we're about to enter into. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't matter who's in leadership at this point, right? That doesn't matter what has happened over the course of just a few years. Other countries have rivaled uh, much of our defense tech, right? They really have. Uh, and because of that, they, they are a true opponent uh, of the USA. And so everybody understands right now they have to act fast. Even to the building of the temple, Pastor Paul, they know that they're running out of time. Right, they do. And they have to coordinate the uh, all those dedications and everything with God's holy days. They even they understand they're running out of time. They're yes. running out of time. And they cannot um, you know, they can't drag their feet on this. They have to be very prompt in what they're doing, right? Um because they they're gonna do what they're gonna do in Israel. Uh and and the Middle East in the meantime you have Jordan starting to show its fangs, right? Yeah. Jordan is King Abdullah. He's starting to, he's starting, all these individuals in the Middle East are starting to show their fangs of what they really want. Now that Saudi Arabia is, is, is just doing a power grab, right? That is absolutely gonna, it's gonna change everything even further than what it is. Um, more hatred is being spewed against Israel, but, but the difference now is that countries have the ability to back up some of their rhetoric, right? Yeah. That's the difference. Before, they didn't have uh, the proper military uh, weapon and, and training right? and experience to do anything about it, just... so they just talked. It's not that way anymore. It's just not that way. If those armies are modernized, right, uh, if the USA could stop the hostilities around the globe, we, will, we would have done so, but we cannot. We can't. So anytime you see, the, even the USA understands that we have to be ready on two fronts. We have to be ready for China. We have to be ready to assist uh, other countries that may be at odds with China. We have to be ready for North Korea. We have to be ready for the Middle East. Uh, Turkey's a wild card. Continued support and, uh, or, or let's just say, the financing of the military is has a big question mark beside it because of Iran's wealth and because of Saudi Arabia's wealth. People will learn this year that many have been lying about Iran and how much money they really have. And when that comes out, people are going to get quite hostile. I, you know, I think Trump will let that one out. I'm pretty sure he will. Yeah. Because uh, there have been many lies and people have the wrong picture about uh, the Middle East. And, and so all these things that were in the dark, they're coming to the light. People are going to know about the power, the influence, the, ex the expansive reach of Iran. Iran is not some backwoods you know, country under a rock. That's not what it is. Uh, it is a formidable foe. And all those things are going to become painfully obvious. But the Middle Eastern, the Middle East is going to be reshaped and will become somewhat the center of everything in this world, right? It's already shifted. And it's almost like uh, there, there are several in leadership right now, not, not the White House leadership, but other roles of leadership that are, they're saying they can't, it's, it's very hard to watch uh, th this centralized power be distributed directly overseas, right? Yes. And because we utilized, we utilized management of resources all around the globe in a very irresponsible way. We did, you know, but you live and learn. But with the leadership folks that we've had that don't really seem to care too much, about uh, you know the USA's position and, and its responsibilities over the course of several terms we've dropped the ball in some things right and so now the reality of of our laziness I guess you could say is catching up with us so the propaganda is not matching the reality of what's happening in the world we're going to find that out painfully a big war yes is everybody preparing for it you better believe it um is the USA involved in this? It is target number one with Israel, 
right? Israel is a major target of most places in the Middle East, so is the USA. Is can they have do they have the ability to cause both to burn at the same time? Yes, they do. That's yes, that's a do. big statement. Yes, so. That's a big yes, statement. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now the eclipse is around the corner. Um, uh, everybody, you know, look. People are wondering about it. I mean, um, I, I just did an interview that's going to be on this week, or this coming Thursday on on uh, CBN uh, television, and it's going to be really. It was a very well taped interview, and I'm excited about. It. We talk a lot about the eclipse. We talk about it, we talk about Israel as well and everything going on. And then I'm also going to be uh, the night bef the night before on Sunday night, April seventh, before the eclipse on the eighth. Uh, I'm going to be doing a two-hour show on Coast to Coast with George Norrie, and that's two million listeners. And he wants to talk about these things we're talking about, Mike, for two hours because he 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 feels this eclipse is this could be a sign from God. I, I, my question to you is: Is it a is God? I mean, what's the odds of this eclipse happening with everything else you just talked about tonight? Well, he created the Earth and the Moon and the stars, and man has simply aligned itself with that. Uh, well, the Lord has already walked through these days. He did declare the end from the beginning, so it, God is well acquainted with these days. I are you really think it is a, a big are, sign? Are you worried about the fact that there are National Guard being? Uh, a lot of different uh, agencies, FEMA, the Department of Homeland Security, um, I mean, all kinds of agencies up and down the path of this thing. Um, I know that they got to keep peace and order and there could be problems and the traffic's going to be outrageous. But are you a little concerned about it? Are they overplaying this? No, they're underplaying it. Wow. Pastor, we have a terrorist problem within the USA right now okay right now and and you know just to be blunt people are going to die from terrorist activities within the USA they can call it whatever they want but we have a terrorist problem right now we don't have a terrorist problem coming we have a terrorist problem right now terrorist right now is it be, is country. did the southern border is that part of why we have a terrorist problem well the is going to complement it. Okay. But think of it this way. Think of it this way. I used to talk about sleeper cells a lot. Yeah. You don't hear anything about sleeper cells. People used to talk about the Spetsnaz, Russian uh, Spetsnaz troops in the USA. Nobody talks about Russian Spetsnaz troops here in the USA. They used to talk about foreign nations, uh, uh, Middle Eastern nations being trained by the U.S. Army here in the USA. This was as close as what 2010 this is back in 2010 they used to talk about these subjects uh, they don't talk about that anymore right they don't they used to talk about training camps here in the usa for several nations outside of the usa uh, they don't talk about that anymore and so just because they're not talking about it does not mean it, it's gone it doesn't exist See, that's the part. When they don't talk about something, the public forgets it instantly. But here's the truth. We have an overrun with folks who are not loyal to the USA. They hate the USA. Yeah. These folks are in leadership. These folks are corporate um, uh, executives. These folks are employees at nuclear power plants. Uh, two of the individuals designed uh, power plants, nuclear power plants. Right, that were actually taken out of power. You didn't read about that. No. Right. They don't. They didn't disclose that. And so we have a severe problem. And with this eclipse, they know that they, the whole world knows where people are going to be lined up within the USA. Now think about this. This event is going to take place starting uh, um, a little bit southwest of Mexico, all the way up past Maine. Right. So all these people from all over the world are coming where here aren't they yes to see whatever they can see they're coming here to the usa do you really think all those people are usa loyalists no lord you no think they love america no and if they get themselves embedded in a big crowd right anything that happens looking at the southern border while everybody's looking at you know uh, boats coming in from the west and from the east and all this 
the real terrorists are going to come in by planes, right? With good passports, with long histories with the USA. And what I'm trying to say is that we have a problem that is, it's a little different than what everybody is used to. But somebody has to see it. Somebody's going to, the public needs to know that we have an embedded terrorism problem here in the USA, that we have folks that are normally trusted who hate the USA. They know everybody in the USA. They're, you know, average people. They have a history of coming here to this nation, but they hate the USA. And since Israel and Hamas have gotten into this conflict, it really brought about these loyalties. It's really starting to show. Yeah, it really is. And this that war in Israel with Hamas has it, the chatter that's developed within the USA has never been as high concerning, uh, you know, talk about the USA, uh, talk about Hamas and Israel. It's never been that high. We're talking about hostilities, hostile statements, people talking about hostilities towards Israel, right? Talking about killing Benjamin Netanyahu and his entire cabinet, and it's coming from this nation. Right. So, wow. Yeah, you know, we, we have a big problem. Wow. Big problem. And, if, and people aren't, they're not, uh, so they're not paying attention. So, you're, you like, are at this point probably the most concerned that you've ever been uh, uh, for America, for, for Israel, maybe uh, for a, glo- a global uh, conflagration of, of just explos- explosion. Of war and rumors of, I mean, really, um, you've painted a picture that's, I know it's true, it's very concerning. We all wished it would go away. We all hope that we don't, that what we suspect we hope isn't real. But the truth is, it's more than just real. It's, it's upon us. Uh, it's literally upon us, uh, like a polyon coming out of the pit. Let, let me ask you this question, Mike, also. Uh, I broke this story because nobody saw this, but I did. I, f- I found where NASA is firing these three rockets straight at the eclipse um, on April 8th. Three rockets, and they named it, they named it after the serpent deity. Um, uh, can you, I mean, they say what they're doing is these three rockets are going to check the temperature because when you have an eclipse, of course, the temperature does go down quite a bit they want to know what the temperature is during eclipse in the upper atmosphere i'm asking you a question how much money does it cost to fire a rocket <laughs> how about three of them that's, that's quite a bit just to uh, check the temperature mike and why would you fire it straight at this eclipse and name it the serpent deity is this another cern um pagan ritual what's going on well, ritual, ritualistic, always, um, always, which is why the space agencies uh, and, and anybody who flies in the air, they're going to have symbol, symbology. They're going to use symbology of the ancient gods, always. The Apollo missions, same thing. Gemini missions, same thing. Uh, Elon Musk, right? Um, there are certain things NASA requires. He has to comply or... You know, you can't send anything up like that. So they're all in compliance with something that rules the air, right? Um, as far as their missile launches, what they're launching is, well, you kind of saw right through it. But why three? Yeah, why three? Um, why three? Why on that day? And for what atmospheric anomalies? In, in, um, uh, in, in the atmospheres, I, I, one is out of concern. The other one is part of what they normally do, right? They, they always have rituals. Now think of a ritual this way. Think of a rich guy who hires people because they're good at their jobs. Now the people may not know it's a ritual. They're just gonna perfect their own personal job, but that executive chain, they understand what they're doing. And so they are very specific in what they Want, right? Yes. So they always disguise it. Right now, we're in a very high spiritual time for witches and warlocks and all that stuff. A very high spiritual time, which means we're right at the time for their sacrifices, right? Yes. Uh, they deal with real, well, I hate to say it, but real entities, 
right? They deal with that. Real yes. entities. <clears throat> so it's not like it's not like a movie. Like you see people in a movie, they go do all this devil stuff and nothing is there. No, this isn't the case here. They will have receivers of certain things, right? Um, things to receive on the other side. Plus, during an eclipse, do you not know that during an eclipse, uh, the the sun is blocked? Well, the sun has very special properties. We're talking about beyond what most people are used to. So I can't really see it yet, but it has special properties. The light of the sun is a lifesaver, essentially. Whenever the light is stopped, another power rises instantly. In fact, without the sun, uh, if the sun's, if we had the sun's heat, if we had all the properties of the sun, but the light of the sun was not there, we would all die. Right? We could have the heat, we could have all the everything. Just take away the light and we're, all of us are in trouble. Right? We're in trouble. So the sun does a very specific thing. Every time we have a total solar eclipse over whatever place it totality reaches, right? that effect is broken. Let's just say the veil is split. In real life, in reality, the veil is split. Um, and so they take full advantage of that. Right? full advantage because it does not matter where an eclipse happens it doesn't matter if you're going to take if you're going to do atmospheric anomalistic readings or take those tests it does not matter uh where you take those tests at because the atmosphere doesn't stay in one spot it moves it's in motion right so if you uh for example if you if you observe the anomaly over south america it doesn't matter where the eclipse actually has its totality effect to cast that shadow over it didn't matter you still get the same data right right so, <laughs> what they're doing is and most people won't put this together because they well they're too technical and they may not know about the other properties of the sun right it, it, i won't mention it because it sounds esoteric or something like that and there's no real foundation uh for that knowledge yet but anyway it, it just sounds weird and it's uh take too long to explain the foundation of it but they're going to take full advantage of it right which is why on every total solar eclipse you always have these you always have things people record people see uh right after the eclipse there's a change in behavior of every area it affects this always happens you know, it's historical. People can go back and see. And another big reason is we're in trouble by way of the sun, and they know it. Yeah. So uh, this is this is uh, solar cycle twenty five, right? Yep. And the the anomaly in South America has grown too much. Now let me let me explain something about that anomaly uh, in South America. They have to actually arc satellites, right? They have to they have to kind of dip because the magnetic field is almost totally collapsed in that region now really and yes and so they satellites if they were to fly at their at a standard altitude right they would burn up mm. they would burn, there's no protection satellites are protected by the earth's magnetic field without the magnetic field none of the satellites will stay operational past 48 hours they wow so what's happening in the, the that southern anomaly and pilots they don't fly over that area um they, they take special readings they're always watching pilots have to make adjustments uh, uh so but that area is growing beyond what they ever expected it's kind of like this solar cycle right they never expected this solar cycle to happen so quickly never uh, but they had to move the dates of everything uh, for this solar cycle but we weren't supposed to be this level of activity for the sun was not supposed to be until february of 2025 this so it's so it's ahead so it's you're saying this past scales of activity yeah so the solar cycle's ahead the activity is we, way ahead yeah. and that means as we you did. i believe and you and i think you've said that the effect on the sun you know this binary system is 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 a whole lot more stronger than what any of us anticipated and, and thought it would be and so we're we're witnessing this and so it's it's very interesting now if you look at the scope of the whole picture and i and i titled this 
broadcasts, The Beast Unleashed. And the reason I did that, I said, my Lord, if I look at everything going on right now, I see, I don't just see one problem here or one problem there, or this could get repaired, or we got an issue here. I see an onslaught. I see uh, the hordes of hell being turned loose. And every evil and imagination on men's hearts are on evil continually. That's what was going on in the days of Noah. Are we living in the days of Noah again? Have we come to that point? It's not just a Nineveh. The, it's, you know, yeah, the solar eclipse is going to go over these seven cities of Nineveh. But I'm saying, are we as wicked as it was in the days of Noah? Have we surpassed we Noah even? I think we are. In fact, I think we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. I think we're totally a totally perverted world right now. Right? In, 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 uh, in the time of Noah, uh, one of the biggest complaints were the, the what well, God said, mankind was corrupted, so were the animals corrupted. Right? But yeah. what people don't know is most of the animals have been affected by genetic modification. Right? Yep. But there's another component. Uh, you know, this tampering of humanity from other things is very real it costs about you know, it costs billions of dollars a year uh to, to to really look into that major agencies have been set up a long time ago just for that right are you uh, saying to alter are you saying are you saying to alter our dna to to different mech whether it may be water they're food just robbing people they're robbing people pastor they're, they're taking material from people right and other people are walking among think of it this way think of it this way a person is created from the father that person has children so that person gets the spirit from the father right right uh and it continues that way if if anybody has ever tampered with with an unsanctioned birth why would god put a spirit in something he did not sanction the same thing happened in the days of noah god didn't put a spirit in those things they were partaking of the spirit of their dads the fallen angels right which is why they have no placement in the heavens which is why they roam the earth and are known as evil spirits yes. according to the book of enoch so that same thing is happening again too many human beings have been tampered with right they allocate 700 billion dollars a year uh to 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 uh, special adaptations in all countries to monitor to keep track of all this stuff right so to the public it's just a movie fantasy or something like that medically it's a it's captured from hospitals given to special agencies they know it's very real people people inside the government have come out and tried to tell people about this right people uh, just about every single day are astounded that you can rebuke those things in the name of jesus and their life goes uh, semi back to normal again what have they been doing stealing material wow stealing material this is a so the the beast has been unleashed the, the the literally to defile mankind we are god's creation and satan wants to literally ruin god's creation he's defiling us is that right is he defiling us well, yeah. and, and think a christian right a person who who loves the lord right they're challenged every day Right, me and some others similar to myself, we're looking at areas that are normally not covered like this, Pastor Paul. Well, we have many worries in the world. One thing that is of, of an enormous issue is that Christians have become a target of rhetoric. So I'm saying like this, everybody out there who believes in Christ is always gonna be assigned a person, a person that seems to believe, a person that uh, seem, they seem to share ideologies and things but they try to change the view of that Christian away from what God has given them. A Christian has conviction. They have certain areas that they, that they know and nobody ever taught them. And so they go in a specific direction. What these things do is they get assigned to people, right? And they will alter the course of that person. They will start altering the belief of that person. That person will then find themselves embedded with the world in these worldly ideologies and they're in instant conflict well the next step from that is these people start falling away from the faith right now in the bible the antichrist doesn't show himself until that falling away comes right and i believe it's because of the holy spirit the devil and nothing of the devil 
can prevail in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so more people, the more people who fall away, the less occupation of the Holy Spirit there will be on the face of the earth. And when it gets low enough to a specific level, this thing will rise, right? And more and more every single day, I see more and more Christians compromising with these ideologies of the world, right? Common things like they, 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 they're in a situation, they don't see that adultery is a big deal. They don't see that um, cursing is a big deal. They don't see that lewdness is a big deal. They don't see these things as a big deal. Why? Because they like they've been assigned someone who has befriended them and is robbing they're just stealing from this person uh, what God has given them, which is that strong conviction in these areas that is still an abomination to him. Right? So Satan comes around, he smooths everything out, makes everything okay. And before you know it, you have a lot of Christians saying, oh, you know, that's fine. That's okay. I can live with this. I can live with that. Right? So to me, this world is disgusting. It is absolutely in a fallen state. The problem is, is that more and more people who once believed in Christ have these assignments. And the people, you know, the people may not know they have someone assigned to them, but I can guarantee you, if they, if they can hear me talking, then they know they have a friend who's been trying to guide them away from godly principles. They've been trying to minimize holy principles of the Lord. And they've been getting people away from speaking about Jesus. Right? They speak about everything else, but just don't mention Jesus. Yes. Right? Now, you know something is wrong with that. Oh, right? yeah. You hear it every day. People say, oh, I, I believe in God. Yeah, okay, but do you believe in Jesus of Nazareth? No, they, they don't like that. Him? And see, they won't mention him. Well, they even... They mention God because God is a title. God is not a name. That's right, a title. right. We were given one name. And that's we're not Jesus, even... And that's the very name they can't. They, they want people to leave that name alone. But, you know, they, they, you're exactly right. The power of the name of Jesus is the most powerful name on earth and in heaven and anywhere else. And you'll notice that. You're, you're exactly right. Even our Congress no longer will pray in the name of Jesus. Um, people are scared to death. If you mention Jesus' name on television, it just, demons scream. I mean, they literally cringe because of the power. And the Bible says you can't even call Jesus Lord without the power of the Holy Ghost. You, you know, you have to have God in your life through Jesus Christ and the salvation through Christ and the power of his blood and the mercy of his grace. And this all comes through his name, the name of Jesus. It is the greatest name that we'll ever know. And in this time, is it, aren't Christians going to have to utilize the gifts of the Spirit the name of Jesus, the power of the blood of Christ, their faith has got to, we got to quit relying on everything natural and start relying on what God's given us supernaturally. Would you agree? I strongly believe that. Strongly believe that. Pastor Paul, I've been in circumstances where nothing helps except Amen. spiritual authority. Right? Amen. And if a person's going to have that spiritual authority, uh, there's still time for them to be in Christ. Uh, still time, still time, but uh, there will come a time when weapons and provisions will fail everybody, mm. and that's not going to be a good day no. for a lot of people. No, it will not. Uh, Mike, Whoopi Goldberg says she's now positive aliens are among us. Is this? Are we going to have another run, another disclosure run, or another push? Is this? Is that is this distraction to keep people from the real problem that's going on in this country and the world? They want. Did you notice in Sodom and Gomorrah that the people saw the angels, right? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Those people saw the angels and perceived them and their authority. The people looked upon them with lust, right? Yep. So they were blinded uh, spiritually and just saw them as an object some object of some fanciful thought they had. The same thing is happening now. So people are being, uh, something is being pulled. They have scales over their eyes that won't allow them to interpret or to see these spirits in the earth. Now, what's, here's what's going to happen, Fastball. The, because they, they're, they're numb to spiritual things, the average person is. Right. Once the manifestation 
of these things begin to show themselves, the average person is not going to be able to tell. Only the Christian will, right? That means your next door neighbor is not going to be able to tell something is up with that person. You know how when you're in public, you pass somebody and you say, ooh, what was that? Right? You can, you can, everybody out there, they know when somebody's looking at them because they can feel it. Yes. I always say that, Pastor Paul, just because when you start talking about this subject, people say, oh, well, they're crazy. <laughs> what's crazy is, is when you turn around and look somebody dead in the eyes because that person was looking at you and they were about 50 feet away. That's crazy that we can perceive when somebody Amen. is staring at us. Yep. So in that same way that we can sense that, right, uh, we can also sense when a, when a spirit, a bad spirit, is around us. Right? You ever go to a place and something just everything in you is you know, alarms are going off, right? Oh yeah. Something is wrong. You don't know what it is. Oh or yeah. You pass by someone or you look at someone and you won't even engage with them because it's almost like a barrier right there. Well, Christians will have that, but the average person, they're going to be blind to it. They Amen. They don't have those senses anymore. They can't tell. So even the demons have become normal to them. Mm, right? mm. Um. They won't be able to see it. Christians will, right? Yes. So these things, when they come to the forefront, the only people that are going to be sensitive to them are the ones who believe in Christ. And if you haven't noticed, um, there are a lot of people who are, well, they're not quite like they used to be, right? They're, they're, they're people that are coming into the Lord, yes, but there are also people who are leaving. Yes, they're yes. Just, a falling away. It's a falling away. Yeah, they're leaving. Yeah. And so uh, these people are the ones who are outspoken and everything else. They're most of the ones who love the Lord, they're, they're very quiet. Uh, they, they don't make big waves yet. But right. They're like David. They'll, they'll surface when the time is right. But these things, basketball, are going to be everywhere. That's what I'm saying. And society won't be able to tell them. Well, hey, don't you think, other. don't you think, I think that the, I think they've gotten used to their demons. I think they love. I think they're almost in love with their demons. It, you said it right there. You, you know, said you said it. But I, you know, that's why women. I give all women a warning. Uh, if anything is is approaches you in your dreams, and it is uh, not holy, you better rebuke it. Do not entertain it. Right. And these things will come into a person's life any way they can through any subject, whether it be crazy or sane, they're going to use every avenue to get to a person. So if it's unholy, rebuke it. Mm. Right? If it's spiritual, test it. Try it by the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything, anything from the Lord is not going to run at the name of Jesus, but everything else will. <laughs> the, Amen. The, the, oh, we have spiritual authority. The only thing God did not give us authority over in this earth is our fellow man. He did not give us authority over each other. But we do have spiritual authority. Amen. For anything that may use our fellow man. All right? So, anyway, Whoopi should know. Because Whoopi <laughs> has, you know, Whoopi has clearance. Yeah, she probably knows. I mean, she she, she so knows she them know. by name. I think she she would, she, she would know these demons by name. Uh, Mike, uh, hey, a week from now, what are we going to be talking about, Mike? What are we going to be talking about? I mean, this is getting dangerous. What do you think is going to happen? Yes, this, What's this, going to happen? We're losing, you know, two things. Terrorism is one, right? Yep. But I have to warn everybody right now. This, this is, uh, we're losing our magnetic field. Okay. Our magnetic field is about to drop to 10%. Do you know what happens at 10%? No. Well, let me put it to you this way. There are several events in history about about two to 400 years apart. The magnetosphere in certain areas dropped to 10% and caused a mass extinction event in certain areas. What? So we're on the brink of extinction if we're not careful? Well, you're gonna have certain places where life won't be sustained. Our Earth is starting a cycle again of changing, magnetically changing, which means we're about to go through a flux period. Where nothing is where everything is out of order. It's like absolute chaos magnetically, right? You, somebody could somebody could look at their compass and have four north poles. Oh That's my like lord! Here, here's the bad part though. This is how you know leadership knows. They're going to abruptly. Let, your people are going to start hearing about GPS and Air Force Command abruptly. 
Okay. Abruptly, which means because we have GPS satellites up there, the Air Force, those are Air Force satellites, by the way. GPS belongs to the Air Force, or we could say Space Command. And so they have to protect those GPS satellites, right? The whole world uses the USA's GPS satellites, just so everybody knows this. That means the enemy's weapons are guided by Air Force equipment, just so everybody knows that. Wow! Right? Everybody needs to know that. Uh, so that's the way that's working, but we're losing the magnetosphere, right? Why? Because there's an anomaly. Of course, the sun is about to flip its poles, right? Uh, consequently, scientists do not know. They have no idea why the sun does this, right? But anybody who believes in a binary system, they do understand it. Uh, which is why it has an average 11 year cycle. It's not precise, anywhere between 9 and 11 years. Um, the sun goes through it through its maximums and its minimums. Uh, but its pulse, its magnetic uh, shifting has begun. But this time it's going to take the earth with it. So we have hit a chaotic region. Now, through volcanic eruption, um, all that material has iron in it. Iron orientates based on the magnetic poles, right? So this is how they can tell how many times um, we flipped our poles here on Earth through, you know, the rock, the strata. They can tell which way iron has been orientated. Um, they've noticed some small areas for about every 200 years something is taking place. That process has started, and one of the larger flipping processes has begun. Now, this is magnetic, but what it does mean is that once we are in this chaotic mode with the magnetosphere, right, where it's not oriented, or most of that radiation is going to do us damage. For example, fastball from, uh, let me get to see if I can, somebody can correct me later, but I believe it was from uh, 1880 to 1950. The sun and global warming, those track lines were exact, right? Yes. So the sun was causing global warming, but something happened in the 1950s, and the solar activity went down, and the global warming trend went up. They separated right? Well, something extraordinary happened in 1950. And so we've been on that track ever since, which lets you know, they know where global warming is coming from. And it started in the 1950s, right? The, the separation of the trends started in 1950. The sun is responsible for, I believe, 42% of global warming. Wow. See, they're not telling the truth, but the data is still on the internet, right? Everybody knows how to use uh, Google to start putting the dates in there, right? When you do your searches, cancel out all the dates that deal with modern day stuff. Go back to the old dates before all that scrub so you can get some good data because all that's going to be gone in short. Time. Mike, also, just one last question here. We're, yes, about, we're We are approaching the 40 day mark that you, th and I'm not holding you to the exact day, but we're, we're, we're I'm just asking. We're right about that 40-day mark, I think, by tomorrow or so, uh, the next few days. As far as the eve of that, tomorrow. Okay. That's the eve of it. So it's... It actually closes out the 30th and... Um, so it's okay, something... Next time we talk, I'm going to tell you what that is. Okay, okay, that's I'm fair. That Everybody is. be here next week, guys, and we'll know what it is. But as Mike just said, we're on the eve of it, and there's something about to happen. He'll tell us what that is next time. Mike, this has been a powerful broadcast. I mean, really, you, you, you just nailed it. And you've brought to the table your explanation of the dangers of Baltimore's bridge, but the, the, the Middle East, I mean, face it, the world is on edge. I've never seen it like this. It's on the brink. It is incredible, the dangers. And I'm afraid that the Biden administration has decided to change direction that's going to change the course of history. And I don't know if Trump getting, if even if Trump gets elected, will the pieces be, will there be any pieces left to pick up? Um, um, you know? As you know, if, if, if they perceive, if the Middle East perceives that the sheriff is about to win, right? Yep. They're going to engage every plan they have. So either way, it's uh, chaos either way. There's no good direction. It's right? yeah. Way. It's chaos either way. Mike, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. It was a very great, great explanation you gave us tonight on these things. And 
I'll sleep better now. I know that uh, not because things are going to get better, but because I know who holds tomorrow and I know who's holding my hand. So thank you, Mike, for being with us tonight. Pass fall is always an honor. God bless you, brother. God bless you. The honor is mine. Thank you so much, Mike. God bless. God bless. Mike from the world, folks. Mike from around the world. You know, I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who's holding my hand. If you don't know who's holding tomorrow, if you don't have him holding your hand, you will be a, a very miserable individual in an uncertain world. But here's the certainty. I'm certain this world is uncertain. I'm confident the world is spinning out of control, that it's driving itself a thousand miles an hour toward the pits of hell. The gates of hell itself are welcoming the majority of mankind. God does not want one person to perish. He said it's not his will that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. You see, Jesus loves us. He gave his life for us. He broke the curse of sin. We're not subject to it. We have authority over it through Jesus Christ. That's if Christ is in your life. Are you saved? Are you saved tonight? Last Thursday, 92 people said, I want to become a Christian. I want to get saved. 22 others rededicated. Another 15 got saved in the archives of the broadcast after the, the fact. I'm asking you tonight, if Christ should come, would you be left behind? Or have you made things right with God? Have you repented of your sins? Are you ready to meet the Lord? If you can't say, Pastor Paul, I know I'm I where I should be. If you can't say that, then type, I want to be saved. Type, I want to be saved. I'll play a song and we will go. I will pray with you. This could be the greatest, absolutely the greatest day of your life. It will be if you give your life to God. Do you know where you're at right now? Do you know where you stand with God? You can. Thank you. 
You know, it's it's such a powerful song. I'm glad Kevin Wilson wrote the song and he and I got to sing it together. And I know there's people, we're, I'm watching right now, I can see the chat now because I put it on my phone and I see so many people saying, I wanna be saved. I wanna rededicate my life to the Lord. Pastor, I wanna be saved. I feel like I should play one more song for you. I feel like there's so many others. You see, the beast, the beast unleashed. It's why I wrote the book, Revelation 9-11. God told me it's about to happen. It's about to be turned completely loose. And Mike, you could hear it in his words. He's never seen such a situation developing, not just in the Middle East. This Middle East thing, folks, affects the whole world. It don't just affect Israel. It's not just the Temple Mount. It's not just the Palestinian people or maybe a couple of nations surrounding Israel. This, what's happening right now, what happens in the next few days, few weeks, or few months can reshape the path of history. Millions could die. Millions could die before the end of this year based on what's happening right now. If you're out there and you're not saved, I want to pray with you. I really do. I'm going to play a song by Kevin Wilson. I want you to come to Jesus. As this song is playing, I want you to come to Jesus. Don't wait. Just type. I'll pray with you right after the song. Come on. Now's your time. Yes. 
just answer when he calls, when the Lord calls now, now. Lord, I know that none are righteous. But I'm held in your nail pierced hands. And I'll sing about perfection, even though I'm not a righteous man. Yeah, a million hopes, a million dreams. I bet them all is a land. And I'll share them with you, even though I'm not a righteous man. And I'll share the Lord with you, even though I'm not a righteous man. You know, the Bible says You know, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible tells us that our righteousness is like filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. We're saved by grace through faith. It's not in ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. At least any man should boast. If you believe in your heart, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I feel we've, we're at a crossroads, not just because of the eclipse that's coming, but I feel like as mankind, human race, has come to a crossroad. And millions are going to choose the wrong path. But millions are going to choose the right way. And every one of us as the individual have a free will to make that choice. Tonight, Lord, I've seen here tonight, a lot of people are saying, I want to be saved. A bunch of people are making the right decision. But Lord, I'm also worried that a lot of them are making the wrong one. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Cleanse us, save us, set us free, break us free, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. Cleanse me. Because I believe. Lord, I believe, I believe, Lord, I truly believe, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that his name is above every name. I believe that Christ died on the cross. And this weekend, I'm going to reflect on the, the pain and the suffering that he did not have to go through being the Son of God. But Lord, he did. I believe he did. I believe, Lord that he came out of that grave with victory, not only for himself, but for all of us who believe in him and call upon his name. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free, Lord. I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm completely free, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lord, thank you for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for redeeming us. And for all of you who just got saved, welcome to the family, okay? Welcome to the big family of God. Your names are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Satan has just lost another soul. 
I want to encourage you to get baptized. Find a pastor, find a church. We baptized three people last Sunday under the big tent. And I pray that there will be more who will come to the Lord. Also, if you need a Bible, send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. We'll send it to you. We'll send you a Bible for free. If you're sick, I'll anoint a prayer cloth. We'll anoint it. We'll pray over it. We'll send it to you for free. And if anyone is in need of a miracle, maybe they're, maybe you've got cancer and you're in the fourth stage. Maybe you've had a major heart attack or stroke. Maybe you've been in a car accident and maybe some of your loved ones are in comas or very sick or tumors of brain tumors. I want you to still know that God loves you and he is still the healer. He's still the miracle worker. And so Heidi and I send blankets in what Heidi's ministry is called Rachel's Heart through the love of the heart of Rachel, the heart for her people. We'll anoint a blanket and pray over it. We'll send it to the person that needs it. If it's to you, you let us know. I'll we'll send it to you. If it's you, it's for you to get it and give it to someone who's very ill, you need to do that. Just send that email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. And I'm going to ask every person here right now. There's still over 5,000 of you here right now. Thank you for staying through the whole altar call and everything. If God puts it in your heart to give a special offering this tonight and this weekend for Resurrection Sunday. Do that. Do that tonight. You can't outgive God. The more you give, the more God will bless you. And he, Jesus even said it. Give. It'll be given unto you. Good measure. Press down and shaken together. Running over. Men will give into your bosom. That is the Savior we serve. He never ever fails his word I'm sorry that we lost video tonight that somehow I froze I've been looking at a black screen all night and I didn't even have access to the chat room until after Mike come on and I got my telephone and turned it on and I seen where I'm frozen on the screen we've never had this happen where I'm froze on the screen and yet the ticker's still running and yet the chat is still running and the main thing is you all could hear. And that's, that's the most important thing. You could hear. So thank you, guys. God bless all of you. Don't forget my book, Revelation 9-11. If you haven't ordered, you need to do that now. Order five of them. Give four of them away. Keep one for yourself. Because the beast unleashed is upon us. And Jesus is the way. Good night, everybody. I'll be back with you tomorrow with current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. God bless all of you. And it's tomorrow's Good Friday. It's the day our Lord and Savior gave his life on the cross. Reflect on that tomorrow in Jesus' name.